this may well be the world's worst Honda CBR125. You can see, first of all, it's had a big smack at the front and the front forks are extremely bent. I think the front wheel is also a little bit dented, but the front forks are totally bent and also the fork lower here is snapped off. Front tire is pretty dead. Clocks are sort of hanging off. There is a key, so that's decent, I suppose. The tank is dented and the engine's not there, obviously. So engine's out, the bike is stripped. The rear fairings are off and it's time to see if I can get this tank off. So just pull that bolt out, leave it there for later. And lift this whole thing off, hopefully. Okay, one petrol tank out of the way. And I think that's as far as I'll go. The rest of this stuff I need on there. The forks I'm gonna change, but the first thing I'm gonna do is clean this bike. And this is what I want right here. So, I'm not doing this very carefully. I just wanna get a bit of this dirt off so that when I reassemble this bike, it will look much better. And that's the good stuff right there. So I'm just gonna use this engine degreaser to basically spray up inside and then I'm going to use kitchen roll and just see if I can get it a bit cleaner and go through and clean this bike up. I've got some new forks to fit to this bike and I'm going to clean them up first and just see how they look. All of these parts are used and so I need to make sure they're all serviceable. To change the front forks, I've put the bike up in the air at the front by putting concrete blocks and a piece of wood through the back. And what I need to do is remove the brake caliper. So two size 12s, and we'll just put them on the floor, we'll put them back in a minute and this caliper I'm going to completely rebuild so we'll just put that up out of the way for now then on the wheel it's a size 14 on this side where the disc is and on the other side it's a size 19 so I just hold the 19 and turn the 14 and a good little test I'm going to show this on the camera when you undo spindles it's always a great idea to just keep the wheel steady and then spin, turn the spindle because you can see as I'm turning that spindle the gap there is opening and closing and that means that the spindle is really bent so the spindle is toast so we'll change it in a minute. We're undoing a wheel. One spindle out the way, one front wheel out the way. Logic tells you that this yoke should be bent, and of course it is. You can just see that this lower yoke is, is well out of line from the top one. So I'm gonna to have to change this whole thing, and I was going to run away, but you can see it's bent. To take the top yoke off, I just put my 30 millimeter in there, and then give it a twist. It's actually very loose. And this thing should pop off much easier of course with two hands so just push up with one side tap the other side and there you go that's done to take this bottom yoke out which is this piece you have to take this plate off first and it's just some 10 millimeter bolts under there so i'm going to do that and remove this bottom yoke off camera this is the old yoke and it had these which are roller bearings so that was on there and then there's another one which was at the top there, so that's fine. However, the, the replacement has got the old school um, sort of ball bearings. You can see them in there. So the ball bearings sit on this cup and it, they're just not compatible. So I have to change over the bearings. These are the bearings I need. 
and I had to put them on here but there's this in the way so I can't I can't get it off so I'm just going to cut it off really carefully on both sides and then the old one will fall away and I'll be able to put the new one on well that looks a lot better I got the yoke sorted out and installed and then I put the forks back on and I put the wheel back on and it's great to see the bike now staying on its own wheels and it's all straight and looks good and so what I'm going to do next is start to put the engine in. There's already some carburetors in here so I think everything's in place and I just need to put the engine in. The easiest way to do this is to rest the front of the engine on the floor so where the exhaust comes out and then you want to line up the rear bottom engine hole with the frame so I've got the bolt in there you can see and I'll try and capture this on camera you basically want to just swing up the whole engine like that so you need the carburetor and all the other bits out of the way and then you can just put that engine bolt through and it's as easy as that and now the engine's installed and I can just start belting up all the other bits so to put the battery in just find the right one and then drop it in place plus goes to black uh, sorry plus goes to red minus goes to black I've put on the petrol tank and all the stuff under the petrol tank connected up the air box and the carburetors and I've put on the exhaust now, so I've painted it. I'll start at the end and then just work my way across the back and then I'll do the front afterwards and put it on. And it's time to see if this bike will start. So let's just see if it will spin over. Okay, looking good. Sounds good to me, but um, it will take a bit of time for petrol to come through. So I'm going to turn the bike on and off a few times like you would with a internet router. I think it's going to go. Now I'm going to turn the throttle off and try again, boom. So the trick there was to have about quarter throttle to let some petrol in and then go to zero and it's running. So it's running well, that sounds perfect, it really does. I need to put this on first, which is the bracket, which I've put some new grease in there as well. So that pushes all the way up and then these two brake pads just sit up like this. This is the pin and it comes from this side. And now I can tighten this up, get the gap here and put this back on the bike. I have put together the headlight, the front panels and the screen. So that's all done. I did it off camera because it was hard to film. And now what I need to do is just paint this before I put it on the bike to make it a bit more presentable so I'm just going to do it really quickly refreshing the mud guard bracket a quick rub down and a bit of paint just to keep the rust off the front brake caliper is on and the front mud guard is on front end is looking good.